Give you a wild word. And happy Mother's Day. And until next time on Sunshine City Chefs, bon cuisine. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. This is Rogers TV, Orillia. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So joining me today is the wonderful, vibrant <laughs> Jerry Croto. Hello Jerry. Hello. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. I am delighted to have you on the show because you know even you walked into our little studio here and you are just a light and you are a joyful person. You are. Oh, I don't know if other people, are other people saying, what, Jerry? No, yeah. but you are. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. and I, I'm really digging the bow tie. And the pink, because it's the pink, pink day, yes. pink day and everything. Yes, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know if they can see your wonderful socks, well, but yeah, no, you've got yeah. it all going on and we, coordin we coordinated our we outfits do. quite do. beautifully. So I asked you here today because I was doing research and I found the Gilbert Center mm -hmm. in Barrie mm -hmm. and I had never even heard of it. So we had a wonderful conversation on the phone and I wanted to learn more mm -hmm. and nice. share share the information. Yeah. So what is, you are the executive director. I am. Yes. I've been there since 2003. Yes. Originally, maybe because you haven't heard it, we just rebranded in 2015. Okay. So we had, it was the AIDS Committee of Simcoe County mm. back in 1993. And it was a grassroots movement that started with a gay man who was HIV positive, mm -hmm. who was out publicly about his status and being gay, and him and his mother, who, by the way, are both still alive, wow. and his mother is 94, and he's in his 70s, and mm -hmm. his name is Ed Gilbert. Oh, okay, so, so hence the Gilbert Center. Yeah, hence the Gilbert. So I put that together? Yeah. So okay. we wanted to change the name from the AIDS Committee because it was no longer relevant. Sure. And HIV, for example, has become a chronic condition more than a death sentence right. than it was in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And we wanted our program to be more diverse. Okay. Because HIV it was still predominantly, 47% um, of HIV infections across the country are amongst gay men. Mm -hmm. So it's one of our programs. And changing the name allowed us to go into youth work. Sure. And it, it just sat better with some funders. Of course, of course. Well, and you can broaden, yeah. you know, what you're what you're bringing to the community. So, yeah. so what other programs do you? So, have? for our youth program, for example, we have Youth Connection, uh, and so youth who are LGBT, so lesbian, gay, bi, trans, or questioning or Q for questioning or queer. Okay. And uh, it was easier for them to come to our programming saying to their parents, can you drop me off? I'm going to the Gilbert Center. Right. As opposed oh, to the course. AIDS committee, because only gay guys get AIDS. Right. And it just, yeah, the Gilbert Center. Yeah. It just So it, it just fit better. And it made course. it a lot, marketing-wise, it made it a lot easier for us to mm -hmm. do programming in areas that might have been a little more restricted sure. to us. And yeah. recognizing that HIV AIDS, HIV is now really a chronic disease and very few would die of AIDS anyway as it was in the early years. Incredible how much that has yeah. changed in the last few Medications, decades. Medications, you know, from Gilead and, and Merck and uh, V, uh, big pharmaceutical firms that have gone from HIV positive people taking 12 pills a day to one. Is that right? Yeah. So wow, HIV AIDS is now one of our programs. Yes. Then we have a gay men's sexual health program. Mm -hmm. We have a transgender program, mm -hmm. trans and diverse program. We have a parenting program. We have Youth Connection, and we have a um, uh, family and youth coordinator. 
So that's so extraordinary. It's very yeah. diverse. So, so, so you support um, kids when you say youth. So who may be gay, straight, gay, and they're they're well, questioning, questioning, yeah. questioning. Yeah. And did you say also their parents? Like, is there so parents? Yeah. For example, parents that have children who are identify in the LGBTQ continuum. Yes. That don't understand, or you know, or and parents who are who have kids who say they want to transition from male to female, so suddenly Jane wants to be Jim. Sure. And uh, Michael wants to be Michelle. Right. And the parents, what? Um, you mean my little girl is a boy? Yes. Or my little boy is a girl? Mm -hmm. So we have support groups for them. Uh, just, just so they can come and talk and hear other parents and, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not more, it's more of a support for a space where the parents are free to Talk to other parents about and say some I'm of scared them. Yeah, or, or confused or what the heck or, or you know or little Johnny's only 14. How could he know? That's right. That's right. You know, and they do know. A lot of kids do know. Yes. Well, we, I, yeah, of course. And I, I somewhere on Facebook or something, uh, someone had said, "Oh, so when did you uh, decide to be heterosexual?" <laughs> yeah. right? well, how long have you been straight? <laughs> yeah. How long have you been straight? You mean you were gay like, and then you went straight? What? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and well. and it's interesting because I just. You're normalizing these, it is what it is, and it's, you're normalizing yeah. these conversations. I had a conversation with someone, he was 29 years old and a jock, mm -hmm. 29. Mm -hmm. He came into my office and he was sitting, you know, so like, like I'm a jock, <laughs> and like I play hockey, yeah, and like I do like sports, and, and uh, like I'm a jock. And I said, yeah, okay, because uh -huh. I didn't know quite where he was going, and right. then he says, but there's a woman inside of me that wants out, wow. and she's been wanting out for 10 years. I mean, shivers went right through my body because here's this, this jog guy. Confused. He, he was fighting it for 10 years since of he was course. 19, and it come to a point then that he's no longer dating, mm -hmm. no longer socializing because he's struggling with this to the point that he doesn't, can't talk to anybody because all his buddies are jocks or and yes. girlfriends he's not dating anymore because sure. he's not sure. Oh. And this woman that's there is wanting out. And you wouldn't choose that. It's just who you are, right? Well, I mean, that's just well, who Well, Bruce just... Jenner, right? Absolutely. Bruce Jenner is a prime example of a guy that was struggling with his, with his uh, transitioning to female and decided to go a jog, excel in sports, muscular, buff, and he Olympian. Did it. Yeah. And he did it, but suddenly he could no longer contain himself and he had $150,000 to do the whole. Of course. Because it, Caitlyn Jenner is absolutely gorgeous, 67 yeah. years old and Seriously, yeah, and I know we've spoke of my friend Michelle Empson, who I've had on right. the show, and you know she said she she would go to well he at the time would go to his therapist and like cure me, cure me, I don't want this. Right. And now the person that I know, the Michelle that allowed it, she says her, her caterpillar to become a <laughs> butterfly, yeah. is, is just the most joyful, giving, wonderful person mm -hmm. and authentically herself and now being a voice for change and you know rights for right, all. Right. And, and that's truly what it's all about, isn't Exa it? Exactly. So we, another program we do have is Community Development run by Dale Boyle, who's a fantastic young uh, man, about 26 years old, I think. And he will go into companies like Rogers or, or the Simcoe Muskoka House, and he brings in a program of giving individuals um, the use of pronouns how to look at your job application and see if it's mm, diverse, right. where it's not just male, female, that kind of thing, and language to use in sensitivity training so that companies who employ uh, individuals from the LGBT community are comfortable if somebody comes out to them. For example, if, if you have a trans female working for you and suddenly they announce that they're transitioning, sure. you can't fire them. No. You know, you hired a male and suddenly it's a female. Yeah. Uh, you know, so what do you do? So he gives that education and trains employers how to make their their job applications more friendly or GT, yeah, LGBT diverse so that pronouns are correctly used. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like sex, what are you, male or female? What happens if you're not? Right. And it really shouldn't be relevant. It's right? You're, you're, do, you, do you fit the job description? But if somebody who is from the LGBT community, a trans woman, has all the skill sets you're looking for, that's right. you want her. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting. And, you know, I think it's important, though. Go into companies. And, and it's like any conversation having the talk. Go in and talk to people about these things. Like, why? Mm. Of course it's uncomfortable. It's foreign and people aren't sure. So go and teach them. <laughs> So there is comfort on both sides, yeah. right? Yeah. And and that is really important. I, I really I really admire that. And so, what would you say? Uh, obviously, we've we've come leaps and bounds with acceptance. And I mean, I think of high school. I didn't even know the word gay. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, now I look back and go, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes ah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But I mean, it just wasn't a part of our vocabulary, and and we've come so mm-hmm. far. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean that they've leaps and bounds, and like you have your Roger show, where you're you're able to have these conversations. What is your show called? With Jerry. <laughs> With Jerry. And I'm sure you have some pretty spicy guests and some conversations. Well, you'd have to watch the program on I... Friday nights at 9 o'clock, Channel 10. <laughs> I... Not to take away from your fabulous no, show, of course. No, no, it's all right. But, and you, you have members of the LGBTQ yeah, mostly. community yeah. Yeah. and yeah. sharing their stories. It's educational. Yeah. Uh, so that it normalizes, maybe. But, you know, Canada's had same-sex marriage for since over 10 years. Yes. But Has it been over 10 years yeah. already? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, 2009, 2008, okay. somewhere in there. But mm-hmm. two men who are married, legally married, cannot walk hand-in-hand hand down Dunlop Street and Barry or Lackley Street or or uh, Coldwater or West Street in Aurelia and feel comfortable. Right. And yet they're legally married. Of course. So two men in a restaurant cannot kissy-kissy and hold hands. Right. But they're legally married. But a male-female can. Mm -hmm. So how far has it come? Right. In some ways it's come very far. Yes. But the stigma is still there. We still have a ways to go. And in a more conservative environment that Mm. that uh, Simcoe Muskoka is a little bit more conservative than maybe Toronto sure you have to be careful well yeah you You don't want to get beat up no I mean there's even the still interracial marriages and some people are still oh I walked into a bar in Barrie with red pants a red shirt I think I had this shirt on red socks red shoes because I just done a, a show and I walked in with a lady friend of mine and they were playing pool and the woman said to me Ooh, you like to play pool and hold a stick? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, wow, said to my lady, friend, we need to get out of here yep. right now. Check, please. <laughs> yeah. Because if this is the woman, yes. what's the guy going to so, say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so we left. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, again, we have come a long way, but truly it is about normalizing the conversations, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and I talk about that in my book, normalizing conversations about grief, death, and dying. And, and I tell people, I hope my kids don't hear this part because I say they're kind of like our experiment. Like mm-hmm. we have our twins are 13 now. And right from the beginning, we've normalized conversations. So the, in the neighborhood, this little boy had two moms. I said, hey, mom, how come, how come, you know, this little boy has two moms? And I explained it. Oh, well, you know, that's they are lesbians, and that means they have chosen, and they love each other. And you love who you love, right? That's the whole, you love who mm-hmm, you love. Mm-hmm. And, and they, my kids don't actually really know that this is a really big deal, like that people really, really struggle with this. Or, oh, you know, there are people with different color skin, there are different cultures, and, you know, and and we just make all the matter facts of life. Yeah. Regular conversations. I, if you have any questions, yeah, ask me. I grew up long before you were born, but in those days, you couldn't even talk about sex in school. They never gave you sex ed. Well, all they, they said, don't do a very good job yeah. now either. But, <laughs> yeah. but all they said is if you hold hands with a girl, she's going to get pregnant. That was your sex that education? That was our sex education because, wow. because then you find out holding hands could lead to something else. Oh, So don't right. hold hands. So don't even start Don't the even go down, don't that go down that road. Don't go down that road. Don't go down, never mind anything else. Wow. So Very informative. My son, when he was growing up, his generation, the millennials, they're much more fluid. Yes. They don't stigmatize as much. They don't care. Gay, straight, lesbian, uh, pansexual, mm-hmm. trans. Mm-hmm. It's not that much of a big deal. Right. But our generation, my generation, which is older than your generation. Thanks but people, for thinking bo- that. Maybe but people that are born in the 70s, 80s, and 90s yes. aren't there. Are, uh, aren't there. Are, 70, 60s, 70s, 80s, but the kids born in the 20, 1990s right. and, and 2000, 2000 mm-hmm. you know, and teens today, 
they don't know all, they know all about it. But yeah. when I was growing up, nobody ever told me about masturbation, for example. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't. Well, Hello, you didn't it's even normal. hold hands. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, you know. Yeah, but. You know, with, with not having those conversations comes fear and, you know, yeah, oh gosh, am I, wh what am I doing? I, I must be a weirdo or something. This isn't normal. Yeah. We need to normalize conversations. And I actually just saw a clip uh, from the Netherlands at, mm -hmm. who have sex education mm -hmm. from kindergarten on. Mm -hmm. They just n normalize the conversations, right. give the information, age, you know, considering the age of the children. But it isn't just like this big reveal. Whereas now they have sex education in grade seven and eight. Well, I think. But who's giving it? Yeah, yeah. A teacher that doesn't want to give it, maybe. I'm not saying all teachers. No, no. Don't, but absolutely. they don't have the latest they statistics. Have to. They don't have the latest statistics. Do they know about chemsex, where sex is introduced through chemicals like uh, opioids? Did you say chemsex? Chemsex. C H E M. Well, where, where drugs are used. Oh, okay. Party and play. Crystal meth, oh, that kind of thing. So kids yeah. are into that. It's oh, not all I love kids. my bubble. I mean, yes. <laughs> no, but <laughs> yeah, you're asking, right? Are, yeah, no, So no, the Gilbert like, Center, in fact, is a refuge or a safe space where kids can ask those questions yes. from individuals that have an, an understanding or know, whereas parents might not know. You're just of saying, course, I'm in a I bubble. So if your twins want to know about it, yeah. where do I they Google go it. for it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Google, no, internet is not always accurate. Absolutely. So where do they get that information? And, and especially if they're questioning their sexuality, sure. I don't know, and should I? Some parents are comfortable, but not all parents are comfortable. And much better to be able to say, you know, why don't you check this out or check it out for them and check us out and come to, come to one of the group sessions and say and talk okay, to real life yeah. people and have conversations so what, what, what will happen if my child comes here because I'm looking for something to need help we get it more in the trans community okay because a lot of folks don't understand right sure I mean I had to learn it do a lot of and some parents don't want to accept it absolutely Johnny is not gay yeah it's just a just a stage well, maybe, but maybe not. Really? Is it just yeah. a stage? I mean, yeah. isn't, so, yeah. It might anyway. be, but it might not be. Right. So better to find out rather than force a child to be more withdrawn, less able to talk, not feel safe in, in approaching the subject with their parents. Because some, and usually the mother gets it. The mother is usually the one that will say, that will be much more receptive to, Mom, can I talk to you? Mm, sure. Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, when my mother caught me masturbating, mm -hmm. the first thing she said to me, what are you doing? Are you playing with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I went, right away, uh, it was bad. That's a trick question. <laughs> right away, it was bad. Yes, I'm playing with myself because who else is there? <laughs> but, oh, but, that, but that kind of approach. Shame. Shame. Guilt. No conversation. Can't do it. No, it shut me right down. Yeah. What do you do? So if that's what happens, so something, a place like the Gilbert Center will allow kids to come, and I'm not saying parents don't, but some kids have struggles with it, and some kids just don't want to talk to their mom and dad about it because they don't feel comfortable. Well, of course, yeah, and so that, and it. truly, to have an adult outside of the family to go to for information mm -hmm. that you know is it's gonna it's gonna be non-judgmental. Right. You know, you're not worried about your parents. You, you worry about your parents' reaction. I yeah. mean, that's just, you know. That's I have a cousin who had two twin girls. One was girly girly, pink, ballet, yep. curly the hair. Works. The works. The other one, one put on her brother's clothes whenever she could. Yep. Didn't want long hair. Yep. Was miserable. Finally, my 99-year-old aunt, who is her great-grandmother, said to her granddaughter, the mother of these twins, why don't you just let her do what she wants to do? Was she they, making her dress different? They were, no, they were making her dress as yeah. a, a young girl yeah. to mirror her in, sister. A young girl in their mind. So she had her hair uh, shorter, something like yours, and she wore pants that were suited to young girls. Mm. Her grades... And, and not because she's a lesbian, we don't know, but that's how she preferred to dress. You know, that so is just, yeah. and, and that's such an important, we have relatives who have triplets, and one of the triplets is the same. She wanted her hair short, she likes to wear pants, she doesn't like dresses, right. and our cousins are completely wonderful. Whatever you want to do, that's yeah. your decision. And you know, whatever guidance they need along the way, they'll they'll search if there if there is guidance needed. But maybe she just doesn't want to wear dresses. Yeah. You yeah. know, I didn't like wearing dresses when I was a kid. I was a tomboy. I, I was in the creek. 
you, well, you do this now. Is this kind of a this is your show. <laughs> your show grass. Oh, another thing that we do do too is that we have a project for five years uh, to bring in a Hep C module to teach people and to give them the skill sets on how to deal with Hep C if it's chronic. Because mm -hmm. there is medication, it's a seven week medication program that you can overcome the virus and, and rid the body of it, but it doesn't work for everybody. So we're doing that. That's part of what we do. We're doing a trans health program research for Simcoe Muskoka. Wow. So, we, so we are doing a lot of uh, projects that are not related but impact the LGBT community. Right. Yeah. So when there's Muskoka Pride in the Pride, do you come with your information? Yes. Like you so when we're invited, so yes. Barry Pride has their annual Pride Festival. This year it's June the 9th and 10th, I think, that weekend, 9th, 10th, and 11th. So we're, we're there. We're there with the, the health unit. Uh, the health unit will be doing testing, but we're there with information yes. and talking about some of the work we do. And we have a whole youth, our, or we have a youth board where we empower youth that come to our organization to take a lead and, okay, what do you want to do? We want to have a float, we want to do this, we want to do that. And we yeah. give them that that ability to do it and put some resources. We don't have a lot of resources. Right. Let's say $1,000. Here's we, we can come up with $1,000 to help you bring that programming to, and coming from youth, in peer support and youth empowering youth is you know like the the we turn me into we mm -hmm. uh, it's in it's infectious when youth can see that they actually can influence decisions that Absolutely. adults are going to make and actually be a part of it and say no this is what we want okay and yes they, and, they and have and a voice they have a voice yeah and they're, and they're more great. engaged in the programming at the gilbert center so yes. and, and we're always looking for new people down the road so okay better that we give a good impression and an honest and real impression mm -hmm. so that it affects them in a positive way instead Absolutely. of negativity yeah well and you know you you made a really good point that i hadn't thought of because not only i mean sometimes parents don't have the information needed and i do i i feel for these teachers that it is like by the way you're the grade seven or eight teacher it's your job to teach sex ed and they're going oh, it's not really you know it's not my specialty I, but what an important subject and when we're, we're teaching it in grade seven and eight it's already a little late isn't it yeah, for, yeah. well for example bullying I was in school sure. in the 60s and 50s we got bullied they never called it bullying right you just got beat up and black <laughs> eyes something and you go home and what happened uh, Johnny Boyle punched me in the face oh well yeah, you look okay. well, but there was no thought of it that's bullying right and there was no protective environment where you could go to the school principal because they were giving you the strap <laughs> so oh never, my god so never mind you know, strap. So they were I remember you. the strap did you ever yeah so. I know I think it got in grade six because I I did a boycott because so. the boys side was way bigger than the girls side so I went on strike and I think I got so when the, the teachers are strapping students Right. You're hardly you're gonna, gonna go to, you're not gonna go to them and say I've been bullied. What's bullied? Yeah. Strap strap. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Yeah, yeah. yeah. why did he punch you? And you didn't you tell your wrong? folks that you get the strap from them too for oh, getting the strap at school. Now so, you, so yeah. when I hear that I yeah. do I say thank goodness those things have changed. Yeah, right? Exactly. Because oh my that's just yeah. That's, and we know that we're on the right track because we're getting funding from the county of Simcoe when we okay. they fund our trans program, for example. So we've put together a project, sent it to the Simcoe County, and Simcoe County said, yes, that's good, we'll support that, because awesome. we have citizens in Simcoe who are trans who need that kind of support, yes. great. Same thing with the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care in Ontario. There are gay men who are becoming HIV positive because they don't have the knowledge, they don't uh, know where to go for counseling, great, we'll support that. You know, right. that, those kinds of things. So you may not like it, but it serves a purpose in terms of education, but in the long term, it's giving people education and skill sets so that they don't become infected with HIV. So young kids don't go down that route. They know about safer sex and condom use and the proper use, and they have a positive attitude yes. towards safer sex, and they understand it, and they understand the pitfalls. Mm -hmm. We teach young women how to say no if they don't want to have sex uh -huh. and that kind of respect and and how to how to say no to a young boy that wants to have sex and you don't have sex and not feel that you're doing something that's going to ruin their friend if it ruins your friendship great yeah it wasn't uh, what much not great but I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You know, that kind of, so those skill sets are important and sometimes you just don't get them in school because what the program is 40 minutes well that's the thing it's a quick program and and this is a 
it's something that you don't just learn once and then you have all the facts. Yeah. As your life changes and, and different you know things happen, you're, you need information and we need somewhere. So I think this is just absolutely extraordinary. And do, is there any one particular story with uh, someone who's come to the center or anything that is Well, a, the one, the hockey player. Yeah. But I have to put a plug in for Simcoe Muskoka District, um, well, the health unit, but Simcoe Muskoka District School Board. Yes. They actually came out with a pamphlet on transgender. Oh, wonderful. You know, and so they're much more open as opposed to the private school system. Okay. Yeah, stories. Yeah, there's a lot of stories. I'm not, you know, I could have clients watching. Yeah. <laughs> but there are there are there are um, stories out there. Some of them are good stories, yes. but unfortunately, there's a lot of them that are not good. Right. Because stigma is still very much a part of it. Yes. And we're trying to educate people. Well, for example, the U equals U. A program that's worldwide now it's coming to Simcoe Muskoka about un if so if a person's HIV positive is undetectable in other words conventional blood testing does not detect HIV it's there but they cannot transmit it so the medication that they're taking is effective so they should be using condoms because of other sexual transmitted infections but as far as HIV goes they'll never transmit it that's, that's an good to know. That's, that's an education piece yes. that we're very much behind so is Barry Pride they've endorsed it others have endorsed it and that piece of education is important for people to help bridge the stigma and get rid of it and the fear and the fear there's yeah, fear exactly. i mean you know when you oh. think that uh, that used to be a death sentence yeah. and oh my goodness this, and the education is about being informed making wise yeah. decisions and diffusing the fear so gilbert center has been doing that for many many years when i first started and when first hiv for example because we do more than that but one percent of the hiv infection rates were among females today it's closer to 28 percent Wow. Of really? women who are infected, heterosexual women, the most okay. part, who are infected. How do they get infected? Right, right. So, that kind of education is out there, and we try to bridge the myths. Yes. And bring it into reality. Yes. Yeah. Well, and again, that's the greatest thing we can do because the LGBTQ community are part of our community. We are all, right? I mean, it, there, there are our, our co-workers, our children, our family, there are people everywhere and to be informed and everyone has rights yeah. and everybody should be allowed to be their authentic self, right? Well, yes. Yes, yes of look course. at it, of course. Like, your authentic self is Trey Fabulous. <laughs> and, but, and, what can I say? Yeah, <laughs> what can I say? What I can know, I say? it's yeah. hard. No, no, hard. it is, but I mean, that's some of what we do. The show I do on Rogers, again, bridges, and I try to get the education piece out there yes. so that it becomes more of a, not a gossipy, show but it, it, although there could be some of that can sure. we talk okay yeah <laughs> but you are you're getting information yeah, out there yeah. and I, we're out of time already i told you it would go by quickly i know so yeah. i i really admire and thank you for everything that you do gilbertcenter.ca there's a website people can get information and call anytime can't they yeah, we're oh. open you're every open. day of the week awesome. and we can stay later if we have to all right well thank you so much for my everything. pleasure thank so you for having to me good to meet you too thanks so thanks for joining us today real life talks is about just showing up for yourself and just showing up for others and sometimes having hard conversations or things we just don't talk about. So, if you want to just show up, if you want to be empowered and resilient, my call to action is plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always, bring your own tambourine to the party. Thanks, see you next time.